Good morning, and thank you for attending another, another webinar in the IRS Open Learning Series. This webinar, I'd like to discuss the, the business case for IRS maintenance inspection systems. Now, before I sort of go into this in any great depth, I'd like to talk about something that we at IRS call Critical Asset Surveillance Technologies, or CAST. Now, the term CAST um, refers to a risk-based condition inspection of electrical uh, distribution assets. It's a program that's more 100% surveillance and repair. So what we don't do in this type of methodology is the traditional hands-on calendar-based maintenance. We're going to uh, inspect the equipment routinely, and then we're going to react to the details of those inspections. Now, car surveillance and inspection uh, methods are enabling inspectors to determine the actual condition of the equipment against any predetermined alarm limit. So if you have a maximum temperature um, on an electrical connection, or even like if you're doing a mechanical uh, uh, generator system with vibration limits, as long as you understand those predetermined alarm limits, we can then uh, effectively maintain and carry out any maintenance that's needed in a timely fashion. So again, we are gonna act on the results from the surveillance of the equipment and not the calendar-based maintenance. Now, the surveillance equipment used in the CAST program, you'll, you'll probably use some of these, but infrared thermography, uh, airborne ultrasound, partial discharge testing, motor current analysis, uh, UV or corona cameras, and most importantly, the visual inspection. So these are the type of physical inspections that are completed on our electrical assets on a, on, on a daily basis. Now, this is the results of a, a risk exposure versus reduction uh, completed by the I, IEEE and in this we can see that the blue area is the potential expense to perform repairs upon failure. So if we were running into a run to failure um, this is the uh, the blue area shows the percentage of how much the cost will be and, and this sort of stuff costs us millions of dollars a year and that's not counting production losses, um, any collateral damage to the equipment or most importantly any injury to, uh, to our personnel. Now the red area would be the cost associated with a CASP or a planned maintenance program. And what we're showing here is there's a 66% risk reduction when utilizing a CASP and planned maintenance program versus this run to failure um, or reactive maintenance uh, methodology. So a number of things we need to consider uh, when we're utilizing a CASP program and the equipment associated with that. First and foremost, we need load. We need the equipment under, under as full load, full load as we can or as much load as we can um, because obviously the equipment will yield its most valuable results. An infrared camera is not going to show me much if there's no load on the system. You put some load on it, I squared R, high resistance connection produces a lot of heat with the current flowing through it and we find the problems much quicker. Again, another thing we need is direct access. So an infrared camera can only measure what it can see. Uh, ultrasound, uh, we can listen around door seams or panels, but if it's a sealed system, like let's say a transformer cable box, or whatever, very difficult for me to find an airborne emission when I can't actually get inside the equipment. So all of these cause me problems. So we're, we're, what we start to look into now is what we call electrical maintenance safety devices or EMSDs. These technologies uh, maintain an enclosing guarded condition during a, a, a cast inspection um, and ensuring that the, uh, uh, the engineers or the inspectors not put any risk, but they are designed to allow the test equipment needed for cast programs to be used safely at any time. Yeah, especially when the equipment is under full load. So now if I've got an infrared window or an ultrasound port, I can listen through these, panel stays closed, I can get the data I need under full load conditions and, and uh, the, the, the inspection is much more valuable to me as an engineer, I can get a lot more from it. But, but why stop at infrared inspections? I mean, as, as we looked at cars, there are many types of equipment that you, we use for doing inspections on our, on our electrical uh, distribution equipment. So then why do we just specify an infrared window when we're doing much, much more? So the significant investment required to realize the benefits of an inspection window. And by limiting the scope of the device, you're not gonna maximize the return on investment, and this may limit its future use. 
Because again, you want to be thinking about not what I'm doing today, but what might we be doing in five years' time. And if I'm putting in a, a, an inspection window or system, will that be adequate for me in five years? I don't know. You're going to have to. You know, this is something we really need to consider. Now, the fact this fact alone really demands that we specify what we call a maintenance inspection window that allows all the technologies to be used. So a maintenance inspection window should allow all inspections to be completed by all of the equipment that you intend to use in closed panel energised inspections of your electrical systems. Investing in safety can provide a quick return. OSHA has an online calculator tool that, depending on the type of injury, can help you calculate the true cost, both direct and indirect. The average U.S. company's profit margin is approximately 6%, and for electrical injuries, that means it would take over $3 million in incremental sales to cover the cost of an injury. Investing in an electrical safety program, like the use of electrical maintenance safety devices, can have a very quick return on your investment. Another thing we look at as well is this is a, the, uh, an extract from a report by Emerson on the effect of regular skill preventive maintenance and remote monitoring of critical power systems um, on the mean time between failure showed, uh, showed the following results. Now, mean time between failure is something that we utilise in reliability and so it's a big metric. So what we've seen here is that if we were to... Uh, do four inspections a year, every three months, which is very simple to do with EMSDs. And we were using wireless temperature monitoring, such as a, uh, an e-sentry, uh, sorry, a Delta T alert system. Um, we could see an MTBF increase in 51 times. Now that is a huge metric for critical power guys, such as data centers, etc., where if we can increase the MTBF by 51 times, the chance of losing power or losing equipment is, is reduced significantly. So where cost programs utilizing EMSDs impact the indirect costs is here. In operations, personnel, facilities and utilities, maintenance, testing and support, spares and inventory. Because we're going to do routine surveillance of this equipment and we're only going to maintain it as and when it needs it so therefore um, the cost of the calendar based maintenance or routine maintenance that goes away we're going to make it a quick slick and very cost effective way of gathering this data yeah and we're only going to maintain it. we can control spares and inventory because uh, uh, you know depending on if it, they're fast moving items we'll, we'll order them as and when we need them okay so cost programs help me have an impact on those indirect costs, then that 75% of those indirect costs can be significantly impacted by utilising a cost and the MSD program. So cost programs incorporating in the EMSDs provide the following benefits. We remove the high risk behaviours associated with open panel energised inspections of electrical assets by maintaining an enclosed and guarded condition at all times. We safely conduct fully loaded inspections, we access inaccessible equipment, we have much faster inspections, less manpower required, obviously, because we, we're not removing panels, etc. Lower personal protection equipment levels, because again, it's closed and guarded, yeah, and we have an increased inspection frequency. So to summarise, CAST programmes utilising EMSCs can deliver the following. We can see a 66% reduction on, on risk uh, when utilising CAST and uh, plan maintenance programs versus uh, run to failure. We can see a significant impact on the total cost of ownership through reduction of the TCO indirect costs. We can see a significant reduction of man hours required for energised inspections of critical electrical assets. The mean time between failure is significantly improved, which adds to the increased uptime of your equipment and decreased downtime. The return on safety is maximised. The removable of maintenance-induced failures through simplification of energised maintenance inspection processes, and we can see a an increase on, the, on your ROI of your, of your critical asset surveillance train uh, uh, technology equipment, i.e. IR cameras, ultrasound equipment, partial discharge equipment, etc., and the training associated with that, because we're going to, our guys are going to use it a lot more.